Starting a zoo is always tough, and that really comes down to the entrance. The entrance is the key defining factor that really sets up your zoo, so let's talk about how to make your perfect entrance in Planet Zoo. So here we are in a brand new map. And I'm not gonna lie, this starting entrance, it's not the best. Like, look at this thing. It's boring. Let's fix it. Now, you might notice right off the bat is that if we try and select it all, we're not allowed to delete it yet. So what we're going to do is go over here and find guest spawners. Now, these do cost a pretty, pretty big sum of money, so uh, make sure you save up enough in your game for that. Alternatively, if you pop right over here to the entrance, you can select all but one and delete all of those. And you should be able to pick out the one guest spawner in here and get started with that. And then we could just get rid of the rest of this too. We don't need this anymore. Alternatively, if you don't want to use a guest spawner, there's other ways of allowing your guests to spawn too. If you type in entrance, and if you have the European pack installed in your game, you might be able to place down a European ferry or a European coach bus. All four of these function the exact same, so it's really up to you how you want your guests to enter your zoo. For the ferry, it might not make much sense to use it on a map like this, but if you're using the career map, it does make a little bit more sense to use a ferry in here. You can find this map in my workshop if you want to just search up Leaf on the workshop, or you could just use the pre-made template from the career mode. Whatever you choose, it's important to start your zoo, and might I recommend still flattening the area around your map. Don't be deceived because you might think of this map as completely flat, but there's still some minor terrain differences in here. Now for the entrance, the only other piece that you need is the actual ticket booth, otherwise known as a zoo entrance. You can find that right down here. The easiest way to tell which way this is facing forward is by using these green arrows right over here. That's how the guests know they're about to enter the zoo. Now the best part about this, you don't even need to work in the grid for this. You could actually just place these however you want. You can have it be a little bit more like, you know, abstract, kind of like this entrance right here. And I'm sure that there's a cool building you can do with that, but for the purposes of this tutorial, let's keep it simple. Now that we have all three of these pieces, it's also important to know where you actually want your entrance to begin with. Many people fall for the same trick of putting it right at the edge of your map so you have all this room to build, but let's be honest, are you really going to fill up this entire map? For someone like myself who likes to build parking lots and stuff mm -hmm. in this game, I might suggest that you guys actually place it a little bit further in. That way you have a little bit more room to decorate where your guests actually spawn in from. And from there we could use a line to grid right down here when you're placing down paths to actually set up your big plaza. And because we're making a big plaza, I'm going to recommend that you guys build it with the grid tool first and we'll talk about how to actually make this look a little bit more organic in a bit. Now that we have the rough idea of our layout kind of figured out, what we could actually do in here is pop right into these little crevices in between these paths. People always say that the path system in Planet Zoo is not the best, but I think that with these tricks, you can actually find out that they're not that bad. So essentially all you want to do is line up your path right in the middle of these and place it down. Now of course that doesn't look all too good, but if you delete that, you'll notice that it starts to create a nice little organic curve right there. And basically what we can keep on doing is keep repeating that all throughout here until we have nice smooth transitions between our pathways. Then from there we could actually start to place down some more paths for inside the zoo. For example, what I have planned for this entrance right here is a nice big open gift shop that you walk through to enter the rest of the zoo. And then once you're actually in the zoo, I imagine that there would be a nice big plaza for you to group up with all the rest of your friends and family with. And from there, we'll do the exact same thing of placing and removing paths. And that way we have this nice big open plaza in the back and a big one up front. I absolutely love the look of this so far, and it's just the start. Wait until we start to add more plants, foliage, and other facilities for our guests to use. 
Recent updates for Planet Zoo have included the ability to place down stalls. These are pretty much just counters where you can sell stuff such as zoo information, drinks, and even make your own modular gift shops. And honestly, these are perfect for an entrance, so let's start to place some of these down. For gift shops, you'll need to use the modular gift shop piece, and from there, you'll need to place down the rest of these grid items in here with the expansion tiles and start to figure out where you want the parameters of your gift shop to actually be. Now, if you don't like the floor that they provide you over here, don't you worry about that because we could always change that out later. It's important to also know that your facilities are linked up properly to the paths too. And the way that you'll figure that out is if you start to see little blue things on the borders of your paths right there. Now that is looking pretty good, but let's get some custom floor down in here. Now this really works best if you are working on a grid. I always recommend that you guys don't be restricted by the grid, but for the purposes of this tutorial and kind of walkthrough, I'm going to stay on the grid just so you guys are able to follow a little bit better. But from here, because everything else was on the grid, we can start to match up wherever the rest of the stuff we placed down was and kind of match what we have written down on the floor right here. The best part about most building pieces is that guests and staff don't really care about them, which it looks kind of bad right now with, you know, them walking through all this slop. But once we sink this down to the ground, it's not perfect, but it still looks pretty good. Now we can change that out for a different color, and now we can get to work on the rest of our build. Now, I'm not going in with any reference personally for this build, but if you guys are hoping to get some zoo references, Zoo Chat is a fantastic resource where people all over the world have uploaded pictures of zoos that they visited so you guys can make your own zoos at home. So I essentially just made myself a nice little trim with this European stone set, and now I can start to add some other details. Now, a trick that I don't see nearly enough people do is use the grid system to make even more interesting panels. So what I have right here is a two meter wood fence. And essentially what I want is a custom fence on top of that. So I come over here to the twilight door panel and I actually put on position snap and position snap rotation. Also make sure that no random rotation is selected so that when you place it, it looks very cohesive with the wall. Then from there, I start to use the grid system as a tool. So I take both of these items, both the non-gridded piece and the actual gridded piece, and I bring the size down to one meter. Since it's only one meter across, the next meter piece that I place is perfectly in line with that. I delete all the extra pieces from there, and then I change it to zero meters, which hopefully will allow me to get a little bit more detailed with it. Then with all that in place, I could change the grid size back to 4 meters, and now I can start to place this alongside the rest of the grid. And then if I don't like the actual grid pieces that I used for that, I could always just delete them with the right click key. Simple as that. And hey, let's just say I'm not really feeling the color of this stone anymore. I come over here down to the bottom right with multi-selection, I click on the color palette button, and I can click on the stones, and from there, I can multicolor everything down to a much more preferred color. Now that's looking rustic. And back to the grid again, if we just take one of the floor panels from down here, and move it right over here to an undisclosed place, we could start to use that as an anchor for the rest of this build. So say, for example, if I want to place some brick columns everywhere, I could just place it right on that grid, change the grid size down to something a little bit more minimum, and then I could just start to go wild with it. Now this really doesn't take into account piece count, but if you really want to work on the grid without needing to worry about deleting those pieces after, just place your grid piece down right below the ground so that you can't even see it once you're actually placing it. And would you look at that, it's looking mighty good, but again, if the color's not right, just use that color collector. Color collector. Huh? Use that color picker and you can change out the colors however you want. Now this is a little bit of a hot take, but I enjoy using the asphalt roofs as a way to create a little bit of a guide for where I want to go next with the roof. So what do I do? I trace the entire roof. And if these corners are just looking unslightly, just, you know, hide it. No one's gonna know it's the roof. You see, like it didn't even happen. Now with that all complete, we could actually get to work on a 
better looking roof. I think I'm gonna go for shingles on this. You wanna know why? Because every shingle time it looks good. <laughs> and yeah, essentially when you're placing down these roofing tiles, it's very self-explanatory. Just follow the grid and you'll be fine. Now a super important part of roofing that I think a lot more people should do is use these eaves. Listen, it might be tedious, but it's super worth it because your habitats will start to look so much better. And hey, get a little fancy with it. Put some gutters on there too. Again, since we're on the grid, there's no harm in doing something once because it'll just be able to be repeated over and over again afterwards. So there you go. Just keep all that in one group and boom, you have gutters. Then from there, you could just place those other eaves the best you can. Then boom, it's starting to look pretty good. And this is looking pretty on slightly, so let's decorate this a little bit more. Let's change the color out too. And if I say so myself, that is looking pretty good. Now in the facilities tab, there's a whole lot of other stuff that we could place in here. Namely, stuff for guests like bins, benches, and security. Now if you don't have the conservation pack yet, I have no idea what you're doing. But we're going to be using these pieces because they really are the best. I think a nice pale blue would look good in this park. And when you're placing these items down, think about where guests will want to sit. Where guests might congregate, where guests might actually want to meet up with their families. And you don't need to keep things mixed in the same things too. If you want to use multiple different bins, say you want to use one for recycling and one for trash, feel free to do that. It looks good. And let's get that going on the other side too, why not? And hey, that's looking pretty good. And of course, if it is looking a little bit dark, you can always add some lampposts. It really doesn't do anything for gameplay, but hey, it looks pretty, so why not? Now, so far, we have a fantastic looking entrance, but the inside is still a little bit dreary. Let's see if we could fix that. Now, some of these interiors can get a little bit boring, but with the right amount of TLC and playing around with pieces, you can start to make something look pretty good. And you can always imply stuff too, so if you want a staff door, just put it down. No one's gonna hurt you. Oh no, I, I, I think maybe this guy, well, he, he, he looks very dangerous. And if it is looking a little bit dark in here still, you can always add some lamps. Just keep in mind, you'll need to switch them on. And this is why I brought up the grid thing when it came to the rooftop as well, because when you're actually working in here, you don't want to worry about placing these exactly correctly, so having the grid always helps. Okay, it's looking way too droll in here. Let's let's change the floor color. Okay, white, it, it's better. It's certainly better. Right, so the modular gift shop. You guys can check out my tutorial and kind of like overview on this in the video in the title card. But essentially, we can place down however we want to. Essentially, the only items, well, you can place any items in here, but the ones that are able to be used, you just click on your modular gift shop over here, you click on prices, you click on place displays, and you guys will be all set and ready to roll. And from here, you can place down your little... What you will need, though, are the counters, and you could just place these down wherever you want. Then you could just place down a whole bunch of displays, then set them up right afterwards. And with all those placed, we can start to place down our items, whatever we want in here. And yep, most of these are kind of randomized, so it's going to look pretty colorful once this is all done. Well, now we have a big bustling gift shop. Isn't that pretty swanky? Now, if you do have a zoo that has an entrance going through a gift shop, it might be kind of helpful to kind of guide your guests through the actual gift shop itself. So what we're going to do is just place some paw prints. This way, our guests will know exactly where to access the rest of the zoo. And plus, it's kind of cute too, isn't it? Plus, it actually gives this place a little bit more color, which I think it needs. Now, the Planet Zoo Workshop is full of awesome plants. I love using this set by Ricey on the workshop. It's full of really, really awesome plants that you could use inside of your gift shops. And then from there, I kind of just place them wherever I feel like. It's no rhyme or reason. But most of the time, it really helps to fill out gap areas, kind of like right here where nothing else is really going on. Like, hey, throw a few plants there. It looks good. Now with the interior of our gift shop done, we can finally get to work on getting the rest of the exterior done for our entrance to our zoo. I'm great at run-on sentences. 
Now, I know a lot of people, whenever they go to the zoo, they usually see a big old flag right there. So, uh, yeah, let's... Sure, we can use that one, I guess. Actually, no. This one. This one's the one we're gonna use. The beautiful state of Massachusetts. So the best part of going to the zoo for me is seeing a whole bunch of different beautiful plants. So let's get planting. One of my favorite things to do in this game is take a whole bunch of buffalo grass and sink it very slightly into the ground. Putting on random rotation always for plants helps it look so much better. And we kind of just pepper this all throughout the rest of our zoo. Or entrance, really. There, there's no animals yet. Now, once the surrounding... Oh, no, I didn't group them. Okay, lesson learned. Always group these whenever you do this technique. Right, so now that you have all that in a group this time, all you're gonna do is take that green arrow and slowly push all that grass into the ground. That way you don't have that many stark shadows that you typically get. For example, you can see that with the left over here being completely on top of the ground, and this one being slightly sunken into the ground. And plus, it just looks a lot better. Then you can start to place down some longer grass modules in here. And what I like to do, I like to just pepper those on top of the grass pieces that we have in here. Now you might be wondering why I'm spending so much time focusing on these smaller parts that we're just going to cover up later, and that's because it helps to create a more cohesive look in here. Then we're going to go for a little bit different ground cover with these arrowwood bushes, but of course if you're making an entrance in the desert, stick to some more deserty plants. Since we're doing a little bit more of a temperate zoo anyways, I'm sticking to these. Look at that, and a lot of green. That's looking mighty fine. Now if you do want to get a little bit more detailed, you can always take some soil and kind of pepper it around the edges of your kind of pathways around here. Usually these areas get a little bit more foot traffic than the actual forested bits, so it helps to create a little bit more of a realistic and naturalistic look. And honestly, it creates a nice little glowing effect around your build that starts to make it look even better. You can also create your own custom plants too in this game, which honestly, I really recommend. Basically what I'm doing right here, I'm taking all these basket ferns and creating a nice big old patch of floor cover. Then from there, once again, we could just pepper that all around this park. This is so satisfying to do, and honestly, it's taking no time at all. The best part about this is we're working in groups, so we can place at least 10 items at once without needing to place them individually. It is awesome. From there, it's starting to look like pretty good ground cover, but let's get some bushes in here. This saltwort bush is really good for making nice looking bushes too. And the best part about bushes, they don't even need to be bushes, they could be trees. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Basically, do what a, any normal video game developer does and take your tree and sink it right into the ground. That's looking fabulous. Then from there, we could get some normal trees in here. And again, try sinking some of these into the ground. It might actually be pretty good. So I use those cypress trees, but if I want a little bit more of a naturalistic look, I might go for something a little bit different. I honestly love the look of birch trees, so I definitely want to get a bunch of these in here too. And there we have it. It's nice and nestled in the forest. And there's a ton of other small details that you can do in here. You could place down a whole bunch of flowers. I love these tick seeds. Those are pretty good. And to help it settle in the natural environment some more, you could even place down some rocks too. Some of my favorite pieces too are these faux rocks. They just have a really awesome texture. So I really recommend even trying to color match them to your natural rocks and honestly sneaking them into the rest of your zoo. Now we have a beautiful naturalistic looking zoo or at least the start of one. There's a whole bunch of other things that you can do in this zoo to make it look even better too. Say for example, this plaza would be the perfect place for you to have a nice little snack or a meal, or even the perfect place for a fountain as well. There are so many ways to start your zoo, and I'm so glad that you guys chose to learn how to make one with me. Now, of course, the zoo is barely started. There are no animals, so if you guys wanna see the perfect entrance animal exhibit tutorial, let me know in the comments down below. But I hope that this was able to help you guys figure out how to start to build your zoos, and I hope you guys learned something new about building along the way. My name is Leaf, it's been so great that you guys have been able to join me for this little zoo tutorial, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Take care, and bye bye